Provisions of basic services by government includes reliable and safe water supply. With South Africa's uneven distribution of water supply, aging infrastructure and poor performance, is a water crisis looming in the country? In Johannesburg, residents of South Hills and Joburg have not had water for over 32 days now. To talk more on this, we're joined via Teams by Professor Gwibus Duplessis. He's a hydrology and environmental engineer at the Department of Civil Engineer in Stellenbosch. Professor, good morning and thank you very much for your time. You know, many are now saying our water situation has reached crisis point. I mean, just with South Hills that we're talking about, they're actually in fact on day 33 today without water. Is it alarmist to honestly say that we are beyond a crisis now? Yes, I think you've summarized that 100% correctly. I think we are in intensive care at the moment. Uh, our infrastructure, specifically our water supply infrastructure, is a, is a, very, a very tolerable uh, type of infrastructure. But once you have neglect that to the point of no return, and I think that's where we are, you are going to uh, have to deal with serious consequences. Mm -hmm. You know, yesterday, Minister David Mashlobo, as well as Deputy Minister, rather, David Mashlobo, as well as the Minister, were visiting certain areas in Johannesburg. The Deputy Minister was in Egurleni, and community members there, living in high lying areas, told him that they were, in fact, told by officials that water can't be pumped to their area because reservoirs just can't pump water to high lying areas. Surely the infrastructure needs to be upgraded. Can that really be an explanation to community members? No, of course not. Uh, water can be pumped to the high-lying reservoirs. That's how it's been designed, and that's the whole purpose of the system. I, I think our water crisis in our country is sort of been uh, needs to be addressed at, at at really three different levels. These, shall I call it, excuses and reasons being provided to us needs to be considered very carefully. I, I don't think uh, we are being served with our uh, politician decision makers uh, in the way that we are supposed to. And uh, the, fa the problems that we are facing, we as engineers can deal with those as long as we've got the support of the politicians in their decision making. And there's a couple of ways that we can deal with it, but I certainly think that you need to be very careful with those statements that it can't be pumped. Of course, at the moment, uh, ESCOM is not helping us. Uh, mm -hmm. Certainly, if we do do not fix ESCOM, we are going to have more severe water supply problems because we can't pump the water in that instance. We can't do it. But mm -hmm. the designs are there. It's decision making. It's uh, it's a bigger system problem that we need to deal with. Mm -hmm. Now that you've touched on the ESCOM problem, is it viable to perhaps exempt for instance, around water, because if most of the issues are not just infrastructure and perhaps the adequately skilled personnel, but we've also got a ESCOM issue here. Could the minister not deal with this and decide to just exempt a rand water, for instance? Well, of course, I, I do think the minister should do that. Uh, if, if we really need to make sure that uh, all our people are receiving the water, then we need to make sure that the power is there so that we can operate our pumps. Unfortunately, you know, our problem, like I've mentioned right at the beginning, is on a threefold level. And uh, what we try to do is just on one single level try to address these. We, we do need to do this on a social level, on a local government level and on a national government level in order to, to uh, lessen the crisis, if I can put it that way. But certainly, yes, I think we need to take these steps. The minister needs to understand and I, I believe they do. But why we're not implement, implementing it is, is really a mystery for me. But water is the hub of our economy. Uh, livelihood. Everyone needs to have water available to them. If we don't take care of that, we are going to have economic consequences and we are seeing that. Mm -hmm. I listened to an interview that Minister Mkunu had yesterday on a particular radio station and among others he attributed the situation that we are dealing with here in Johannesburg to the inability to separate a water authority and a provider of the service. Can you just unpack this or explain it to us in layman's terms? What exactly is the issue with providing both, being a water authority and providing the service of water? 
Well, it's simple, and I would like to come back to the, the water management institutions. Uh, that's not been uh, put in place. Uh, but in terms of the water civil authority, that's all the local authorities, municipalities for that matter, in our country is local, uh, is water service authorities. Most of them is also water service providers, but the local uh, water service authority can also appoint an external water service provider. But the legislation, the framework is providing for all of these. It's very clear. We just need to implement that. Uh, the, the water service authorities, the local, uh, local authorities, uh, being water service authorities, they need to make sure that these decisions and the policies are in place to make sure that the water service providers, which might be themselves or an external uh, entity, can provide those services. And that's all in place. I, I would like to also take it one step further in terms of the, the uh, institutional arrangements. I think that's one of the critical problems in our water supply in South Africa at the moment. We've been talked about this so, so long, decades. The National Water Act makes provision for the establishment of catchment management agencies that should take care of our water resources on a water management sort of level we seems not to be able to make any headways with that. We talked about that over and over again. We highlight that in the National Water and Sanitation Master Plan. We recently highlight that as a criti critical uh, shortfall in the National Water Security Framework, but yet we fail to make sure that these institutions has been provided in the National Water Act, is been implemented and been operational. The same goes now for the water service providers and the water service authorities, although I think that their situation is very clear cut, who is an authority and who is a water service provider. They must just execute their, uh, th their duties. Uh, yes, the water, the, the capacity of being uh, uh, not available at local authorities is a serious problem. It's okay. also a problem at the National Department of Water and Sanitation, and we need to address those. Mm -hmm. And then, Professor, just in closing, as academics, do you perhaps have an open platform to engage government on some of these issues because you are there seized with them on a daily, you're teaching on this. Do you have that open line to communicate with government on some of the decisions to deal with this crisis? Yes, no. Um, the, the, the yes in as far as we are taking steps from our side, uh, from uh, the academic institutions, to participate and being willing to be members to serve on various platforms that's been created by local authorities uh, if they invite you. But uh, that is not sort of the rule at the moment. You know, we seem that we are working in isolation. Mm. Uh, funding is a significant problem frequently to make this work. Um, there are other means. Uh, I'm also part and academics are trying to provide input like institutions like the Institute of Municipal Engineers of Southern Africa or the South African Institute of Civil Engineers, where we as academics uh, help to advise them and be part of them. And these institutions also do have discussion opportunities uh, from time to time with the politicians, but by far too little, by far too little.